Reinhold Messner and the Third Man Reinhold Messner, born 17th of September 1944, is a mountaineer, adventurer, explorer and writer. From Brixen, Pressanone, in Italy's South Tyrol region. He is renowned for making the first solo ascent of Mount Everest without supplemental oxygen, being the first climber to ascend all 14 8,000ers, peaks over 8,000 metres or 26,000 feet above sea level without oxygen. And he has climbed Everest, Nangoparbat, Choi Oyui, K2, Annapurna, Daulagariri, Makalu and Slotsi. Climbing the Seven Summits, the highest peaks of each of the seven continents by the age of 42. Crossing Antarctica on skis, together with fellow explorer Arved Fuchs. Completing a 2,000 kilometre, 1,200 miles expedition through the Gobi Desert. He is also the author of at least 63 books in German from 1970 to 2006, many of which have been translated into other languages. His family and childhood. Reinhold's father, Joseph Messner, was a teacher and Reinhold had seven brothers and one sister. He grew up in Vilnos and spent his early years climbing in the Alps and the Dolomites. By 13, Reinhold was climbing with his brother Gunther, aged 11. He later made Arctic crossings with his brother Hubert. By the time Reinhold and Gunther were in their early 20s, they were among Europe's best climbers. Both were enthusiastic supporters of alpine-style mountaineering, which consisted of climbing with very light equipment and a minimum of external help. Messner considered the usual expedition style, siege tactics, disrespectful towards nature and mountains. His first Himalayan climb in 1970, the unclimbed Rupal face of Nangaparbat turned out to be a tragic success. Both he and his brother Gunther Pesner reached the summit, but Gunther died two days later on the descent of the DMR face. Reinhold not only lost his brother, but he also lost six toes which had become badly frostbitten during the climb and required amputation. He was in fact close to death, grieving his lost brother, exhausted, dehydrated and almost at his last when he had a quite extraordinary spiritual experience and one which changed his life. Reinhold Messner the Naked Mountain The defining experience of my life happened a long time ago in a faraway place. It was in the Himalaya on Nangaparbat that I experienced the kind of expanded state of being that occurs on two levels of consciousness. For it was there that I experienced quite clearly how life and death first occurred and how they then, almost simultaneously, became part of my biography. 
what happened all those years ago remains in my memory as the story of my own death. And at one and the same time, the impossible story of my survival. The traverse of Nangapabat from south to northwest in 1970 was for me far more than the crossing of a definite line in the geographical sense it was like a border crossing from this world to the next from life to death from death to life Messner in essence achieved ego death a spiritual experience of profound importance The Third Man The account of his experience starts when he and Gunther are trying to descend having reached the summit. Reinhold Messner The Naked Mountain I felt like a tiny dot on the landscape as we moved between the Serax and into uncharted territory below. Down we went zigzagging to avoid the cliffs and constrictions. Two huge seracs, each more than 50 metres high, hung suspended, the steep face above us, between them a shimmering blue wall of hard ice inlaid with little islands of rock. I went on ahead, disappeared from Gunther's view beneath the cliff and popped up again further left before detouring around a crevasse and coming to a stop. I waved and shouted for Gunther to follow. It was only by staying ahead and getting an overall view of the terrain that I was able to spare Gunther the agony of false trails and additional ascents, but the route was not easy to find and I often had to climb back up a good way. On one section, of the front points of our crampons were only biting a few millimetres deep into the glassy hard ice. You could hear clearly the noise the pick of the axe made as it hit the ice. At times, our whole weight was on our crampons and axes. Suddenly, there was a third climber next to me. He was descending with us, keeping a regular distance a little to my right and a few steps away from me, just out of my field of vision. I could not see the figure and still maintain my concentration, but I was certain there was someone there. I could sense his presence. I needed no proof. Certain sounds seemed to confirm his presence, a creaking of the ice, a noise of some kind. He did not speak. He was simply there. He stopped when I stopped. He climbed when I climbed. Maybe I was being followed by a ghost. Whatever it was, I was sure it was there, and the mere presence somehow helped me regain my composure. So now we were three. I never stopped to ask myself how that could be. It just was. But even though this doppelganger helped him and showed him the way, he lost Gunther, who was simply too exhausted to continue. Gunther died in 1970, but his body was found on the Diamor face, an hour's climb above the Diamor base camp, near where Reinhold had believed Gunther was lost. In 2005, 35 years later. Annihilation and the merger with the third man. Unable to find Hunter and exhausted by the conditions, lack of oxygen and lack of sleep, Reinhold decides he is going to have to descend. But the third man never leaves him. Reinhold Messner, the Naked Mountain. In the morning I went down. I had run out of places to look for his brother Gunther and did not know what to do. 
strung out by lack of sleep and anxiety, I drifted into unconsciousness. When I awoke, I was completely drained. I felt groggy, as if I was coming round after a general anaesthetic, as if I had forgotten everything. My head felt as if it was full of cotton wool. My brain numb. I could not even cry. I was unsure of who I really was. Summoning my last vestiges of reason, I managed to understand that the third man was just me, watching myself from a different plane of existence. The avalanche debris was still in shadows. Gunther shouted again, but there was only silence. The sun was bathing the tops of the Mazzino Ridge, and the weather seemed to be improving. High up the valley, the first blue plumes of morning mist were rising. I wondered how far away from any other people I was. Gunther, my shouts were pure reflex now. The other climber was back again. But he no longer had a voice. He came down the avalanche chute, ice axe in hand, and headed for the valley. He glanced back, but there was nothing moving. No sign of life. Nothing. The sun was shining down on the valley. But it was not shining for me. As if in a trance, I watched the third man as he made his descent, stumbling along, searching for a route between the Sarax. Ice axe clenched in his hand, his eyes screwed up into narrow slits. He swayed and staggered on the ice. The skin hung in tatters from his nose. His lips and eyes were badly swollen. He seemed to be moving automatically, without thinking. I had been making my way down since the sun had come onto the DMR face. I had no idea where I was going. I was apathetic, aimless, empty. I felt as if I had forgotten everything. I had never been on Nangaparbat. No, never. And Gunther had never existed. There had never been anyone there. Not even me. I felt ready to die. If you are there waiting, fear is growing. The aftermath. If you are acting, fear is getting less. This experience had a profound influence on the rest of Freinhold's life. He continued climbing and exploring, but also became a member of the European Parliament for the Italian Green Party, was among the founders of Mountain Wilderness, an international NGO dedicated to the protection of mountains worldwide, and set up the Messner Mountain Museums, MMM. Um. After he ceased climbing, he devoted his time to education, lectures and environmental activism, and his six museums. One of which is dedicated to mountains having spiritual significance such as Mount Kailash, Reinhold Messner. I have dedicated to the mountains and the mountain culture a unique project, a network of museums located in six extraordinary places in South Tyrol and Belluno. The Messner Mountain Museum is a place of encounter with the mountains. 
with mountain people. And ultimately, with ourselves. <laughs>